चॅनल म्हणून आम्ही खूप न्यूज करतात खूप प्रोग्राम्स करतात बट काही न्यूज आणि काही प्रोग्राम्स असे असतात जो आमका खूप अभिमान दिसता आणि तातुतला आमचं एक प्रोग्राम म्हणजे परत पहिलो प्रोग्राम म्हणजे माय गोय आणि त्या प्रोग्रामान ज्या तरेन आपले स्थान निर्माण केला ज्या प्रमाणे गोयची संस्कृती गोयची हेरिटेज गोयची हिस्ट्री व्हिडिओ डॉक्युमेंट जाऊन आमच्या फुडल्या सगळ्या पिळग्यां खातीर उरतली ताच्याकय चड अभिमानाची गजाल एक एडिटर म्हणून म्हजे खातीर आणि खंचीत ना आणि ताकात लागून शंभर जाले म्हणून खूप आनंद जाता पण हजार जावचे अशी इच्छा असा आणि ती म्हाका खबर आहे की संजीव बाबूच पुरी करू शकता आणि तो आसा तो हे फुडे व्हरतो आणि एक दीस परत आम्ही असेच उलयतले आणि त्यांना या शंभरा मुखार आणि एक शून्य आयिल्ले असतले आणि गोयचो अख्खो एक व्हिडिओ एनसायक्लोपिडिया हो फुडल्या पिळगे खातीर आमकां मेळटलो हाजी म्हाका पूर्ण खात्री आसा लेडीज इन जनरल थँक्यू व्हेरी मच फॉर वॉचिंग माय गोय विच ब्रिंग्स टू यू द व्हेरियस साईट्स ऑफ गोवा in fact you see me on the screen all the time but the actual credit goes to the entire team of prudent who have gone out of their way to bring these things to you and the journey actually starts with these two gentlemen here who are the main coordinators of all the shoots and making all the preparations here we have got rohit wadkar and we have got sachin sullekar and the most important part of the team after the coordinators are the cameramen who accompany us everywhere and here they are ladies and gentlemen that's shetan that's tukaram that's omkar that's tulshidas that is our charioteer and the driver jafar and the missing people are shirish the cameraman saideep and mayur for you ladies and gentlemen here we have usma we have got pranit we have got apeksha here we have got priyanka who is also the graphic designer we have got tasleem and we have got avinash and ladies and gentlemen today we are missing one more person from here her name is marian this is the dedicated team of video editors and for you ladies and gentlemen the video editors the cameraman who was there with me on my first episode and the cameraman that i have today on the 100th episode is mr chetan gaus he's always at the back of the camera you never get to see him but ladies and gentlemen this is the guy who has been filming everything and bringing it for you i only narrate things so an applause should go to him happy birthday to you happy birthday dear my boy <laughs> hi there back for one of the most important episodes of the entire my goyen series ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for watching my goyen on prudent media today we are going to bring to you the 100th episode of this series and keeping in mind the goan the goingar pon i decided to get the village where i reside as the 100th episode i bring to you the historic village of santa cruz or kalapur i am standing here at a place which is a manus which allows the sea water to come in it is controlled over here they catch fish over here and here you can see the caretaker's hut 
This village has got an amazing history. And I'm going to tell this to you stage by stage as I take you along in my village and show you things which possibly you yourself did not know even if you are a resident of Santa Cruz. So, there is a historic point which defines the village from the city that was behind during the Portuguese era. This was called as Fontainas and this was the beginning of the Panjim city. When we come to Santa Cruz from Fontainas or from Panjim side, you get a Manos. Manos is a place which allows water, tide water to come inside and then they trap it and they catch fish. But you can do that only in Khazan lands. What is Khazan lands? Ladies and gentlemen, you'll be surprised to know. Today we drive from Panjim to Santa Cruz on this road but there was a time that during monsoons and especially during high tide this road used to be covered with water now this was because in goa we have got this concept called as the khazan khazan are tidal lands when there is a high tide the water enters right inside almost a kilometer or so and then at low tide it goes out that allows two types of occupations one is fishing allow the fish to come in, put a net and they get caught when there is a low tide. And the second one is salt. Preparation of salt. Very, very important. Because that is the reason, another thing over here, which I'm going to show you, will make sense. But Santa Cruz village or Kalapur village had two people who were granted the order as barons or barao of Kalapur and they were Mr. Dempo and Mr. Kankaro. One of the scions of that family of Dempos we can see has got the road named Vasantrao S. Dempo Mark from here right up to the new Goa Medical College. And the second gentleman, Barao Kenkro, Baba Kenkro, he has laid something over here which has become a hallmark, a trademark and a signature edifice of the village of uh, Santa Cruz. And that is the Charkhame, the four pillars. I'm going to tell you more when we go over there. Come on. So, as I just cross the markers of the Vasantrao S. Dempo Marg. I come to this wonderful structure over here, which has got four pillars. Now the pillars are very unique. They are square, but they taper as they go on top. And they have a lovely filial on top. And it has got benches on the side, which we call as sopes. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, today these sopes have gone almost about a foot and a half below the level of the road. But there was a time when these were almost about two feet over the road. And that is the time I told you that the roads used to be covered with water. Now what was the need for this gentleman that is Barao or Baron Baba Kenkro? to construct this over here. No person who goes to Bamboli or Santa Cruz can go without appreciating these four pillars or have a mystery on them. Why were they built? The reason was, in the last decade of 1800s, the prince of Portugal, Afonso de Bragas, Don Afonso de Bragas, 
came to Goa or was sent to Goa to sign a treaty with the Ranis. But it is said that he stayed in a big mansion in at the end of Giri towards Mapsa. Now, such an important person had come from Portugal from the royal family. So, this gentleman, that is Mr. Baba Kankaro, thought it very apt to invite him to his place since he had been given the baron title and to welcome him at the border between old Panjim, that is Fontainas, and Santa Cruz. He constructed this four. They say this is the me, the larange, or it is a slice of an orange. It is in that shape. And he put masonry seats. Now, there are beautiful stories about these masonry seats. One, the governor general of Portuguese Goa, who used to be a resident of Panjim because they had shifted their capital to, uh, from Old Goa to Panjim, he would come for his walks over here and then he would rest on this. So right now, I may be resting at the same place where the Portuguese governor was sitting down earlier. And there is a story that goes, every person who would go from here would always wish the governor as they went. But there was this one man who would not wish him. He would just walk straight. So the assistant of uh, the governor or the ADC of the governor asked the governor, Sir, should I ask him why he is not wishing you? He says, no. He said that he must be the sacristan or sakistan of the church. So he says, why? Because he is not bothered of anything else. His own intention is to ring the bell and that is what he does. He does not care for anybody else. And true to his word, that man turned out to be the Sakistan. Okay, that is one part where the governor is concerned. The second part of it is, remember the original Goans, the people who worked in the fields, they always wore a loin cloth. Their upper body and their legs used to be open. We used to call that loincloth as kashti. Whether it was a reindeer climbing the tree or a person working in the field, he would wear a kashti. But this man, when he put all his produce in a basket, it may be vegetables, fish, anything, and had to enter the city, because the city was here, that is Fontainas, the Panjim, old Panjim. There was a rule. In Europe, they still have the rules, but we don't find the Europeans following this rule when they come here to Goa now. That when you enter the city premises, your body should be covered. And it was strictly followed by the Portuguese. And the problem was now this man coming with the big pantle on his head or the big basket, he had to, he had to go into Panjim. But he could not go barechested. So what he would do, he would put his pante down here and he had a long coat which he would wear, put that pante on his head again, go into the city, sell his goods, then come back here, put his pante down, remove that cloth, roll it up, keep it inside and then go back. Now, I told you about taking the pante and putting it down and then putting it. Here we had this sopes, masonry sopes. But in Goa, we had something that was specially built during the Gaonkari time from where the Komunidads were formed. And that was called as a Dorne. And Santa Cruz has still got a Dorne. I must thank whosoever. It was broken down. It has been made into a beautiful Dorne. And you see, that is the place where they would keep the basket and then they would go after they were rested. So now that I have rested over here, let's continue our journey into uh, Santa Cruz. After you pass the four pillars and you are heading towards Kalapur or Santa Cruz, 
you come to a Y junction which has got the ground next door and this ward is called as Bondir. Now frankly speaking there is no such thing called a Bondir but this Bondir is the degeneration or the corruption of the word Bandar. Ladies and gentlemen, the road that goes behind me goes to Talapur main village and the road that comes left uh, to my right is basically going to the Bandar. Rather than just tell you about this, let's go and see. But before that, I will show you something else. On the way, where the original gate of the port was, one pillar of it still survives and that was the entry possibly to the port of uh, Santa Cruz of Kalapur called as Bandar. So ladies and gentlemen, I have come to this place called as Bondir, which actually meant a bandar or a port, which had its traces till about a decade back. Now everything has disappeared. The only thing that is remaining is a big pillar, possibly the entrance next to the ground over there, and two pillars over here that tell us possibly that this was the jetty of the port. Now, if you look behind me, there is a nice river, a broad river. This river was used by the traders to bring in their goods and to take them out. And the most important part of this place to transport was salt. 50,000 tons of salt was taken away. So, a lot of salt is to go from here. And the ships that came here were either from Gujarat, Katiawad or from the Mediterranean or from so many other places. Little bit of history for you of Kalapur, what we know today as Santa Cruz. Kalapur, these lands were given by Shastadev II, that is the Kadamb king, to one Kalappa Kerima somewhere around 1042 AD. It's because that was the rule of the Shastadev king. From Kalappa Kerima, it went down to Naganna, his son, and then to his son, Gandagopal. But this name, Kalapur, may have come because it belonged to Kalappa, Kalappapur, or uh, a place that belongs to Kalappa, a land that belonged to Kalappa. Some say that it was a land of arts. Some say this was Kalyanpur of the East. I don't know. You have to read the history of this land, which is very rich, very, very rich. And from here, when I say rich, the richness came from the port. A lot of trading was happening. And from here, the goods were either taken or brought from another bigger port, which was there called as Gopakapattan, which we today know as Goa Valley, which was the second capital of the Kadam kings. They were originally from Chandrapur. From Chandrapur, because of the silting of the river, they came to Goa Valley and finally they wanted to go to Ella in Old Goa, from where the Bahmanish took it over from them. But the goods used to come here and goods used to be taken and to take any goods, you required a road. Now, if you have to go back in time and look at the road from here, right to the base of the hill, it was a straight road. Now, I told you the word Bondir was a corruption of the word Bandar. Today there is another word over here called as Ubadano. Possibly, anybody wanting to go from here to the port would say Ubadano kasa sarosto, so you go there. Or there was a straight road, you go on that. But this is just what we think. You can see another bridge over there and these bridges have survived centuries, hundreds of years. Small little culverts. But when you come into these areas, come down, see these places because this is my land, this is your land, this is our Goa. 
let us not let all these things go to waste okay Since we were already in Santa Cruz, this is one village that still retains its old charm in the form of beautiful Indo-Portuguese houses. And when we were passing from here, we saw a big, big place, a huge mansion, not a house, rather a mansion uh, that belongs to a family that has been here for a very long time. And I found a good friend of mine, architect Ketak Nationalkar who is a conservation architect. Now, who better to tell us about houses than this gentleman? And do you know what I found him opening the big door with? I found this key. This was the key that was used to open big houses. Today, we open our houses with this small key. But if you have got a key like this, Please don't throw it out, put it in a frame and hang it on the wall. Kirak Bab, welcome to my program, My Going. Uh, in fact, I am uh, very happy to see that uh, you all have retained your old house in Santa Cruz. Can you tell us something about this house, how old it is? Uh, this house is, was built oh, sometime in 1915 okay. by my grandfather's grandfather. He was the one who started it. And then slowly it was completed. So it's been standing now for more than 100 years. Now. Uh, does it have a Razangan? Yes. Or yes more yes. than uh, No, no, one? There's, there's one Razangan inside. Okay. Uh, the family was not that big at that point of time. He was just one, he had just one son. So probably that extension came in later on. So this was built only for that limited family at that time. Okay, can you tell us something about the Indo-Portuguese houses in this beautiful village of Santa Cruz? Yes, see, Santa Cruz, this part actually was like a suburb to Panjim, which was the main city. And already declared a capital by then. So 1843. Yes, 1843 it was declared a capital. So many of these landed families actually settled here. And, and probably there was a hangover of, of old Goa like they had for because of these epidemics and also nobody wanted to stay per se in the city. In the city. They preferred staying in the suburbs where it, life was a little more yeah. sort of, you had a lot of fresh air and all. Mm -hmm. Probably that was one of the reasons why many of these families settled mm -hmm. here. Santa Cruz actually was a very picturesque village at that point of time. There was an intermix of fields and uh, habitation. Know, habitation in between. So it, it was basically a balance which was there. So today, of course, today there are other realities like there is in-migration and all that happens. So it's a bigger planning topic. So ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? Just within a century, 50% of the houses that told us about our past has disappeared. More the reason for us to go into Santa Cruz and see all these houses. Let's go to another house that is very historic and a neighbor to the national cars. When I walked inside the house, ancestral house of National Cars, in this Bondiri area of Santa Cruz, you know, I walked inside this door and then I realized something what my grandmother had told me and I was scandalized. Can you believe what she told me? Because they always, if we uttered any bad word, they would beat us. But here was my grandmother asking me a quiz, Umane, which said, and she asked me, and I quote her, Akka bokan sun kaka bokan. Grandmother saying this? I was shocked. 
And do you know what was the answer of that? Something that is of great heritage value and that is this Adamo. You pull it out from one hole and then you put it into another. Akabokan soon, kakabokan. And by the way, it is not a bad word in Marathi language. Bok means a hole in the wall. Don't get scandalized. Let me open the door for you. into the house of the Kenkris in Bondiri in Santa Cruz. And here I have with me a good friend of mine, architect Rajesh Kenkri, who is from this house. So let us talk to him. Rajesh Bab, welcome to my program called yes, As thank My you. Going. Um, Rajesh Bab, we have always heard that the four pillars, which is a signature architectural edifice of mm. this village of Santa Cruz, was built by somebody from your house. Yes. Uh, can you tell us the reason and who he was? Yes. Uh, as far as I know, this four pillars was built by one of my ancestors, Purushottam Baba Kekro, who was conferred the title of Barao de Kalapur by the s Portuguese government. And this, this four pillars was built to welcome the prince of Portugal who had visited Goa at that time. And uh, he was supposed to be entertained in this particular house, and uh, which was only the front, the main hall, and the uh, the uh, the hall below. Okay. The other uh, end behind, like the chowki, and always added later. Later, okay. Because uh, at that time we used to stay at the village of Kumarzua. Okay. Another thing is that you have a chowki behind. Yes. What was the use of that chowki here? Uh, I think during those days of the Portuguese time where the, where the ladies of the house couldn't possibly venture out, this was a space, uh, more of a community space for them. They used it for drying up uh, their items, food items. During our Chaturthi time, this was a space where the kids of the house would assemble and play while the elders of the house were on the tsoki doing artis and you know talking so it was a very community space wherein people would actually use it uh, to get together and you know feel that uh, bond together bond together ladies maybe. and gentlemen he used the word community space in his house but in goa we have the same problem few spaces are left where we as a community the goans can retain get together and bond ourselves. It's no point just saying going, uh, go on, going car. All those things are virtual. Ladies and gentlemen, take the cue from architect uh, Rajesh Kenkri. Get together, do what you can for your village because after some time, we will not have anything to say that is gone. So let us bid goodbye to our friend here and proceed. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.